Okay, so we will now use a program to calculate the sample size. And what we want to show is how these five variables are interrelated. And uh, we will use it to calculate the example of the lesion area and the tablets. So let's start with the tablets. So uh, we want to make a test about the mean. And uh, we have uh, one group difference from constant. This is the case of the tablet because uh, we want to show that the concentration is different from 250. And this is if we can assume Gaussianity of the observations, and this is if we cannot assume Gaussianity. And there are many other, po other possibilities that, for the moment, are not interesting for the tablets. So let's start with the tablet one. So we will do a t-test. We can do a set test, and, and we have different uh, possibilities here. But the one, uh, so uh, for the design, uh, we will use the t-test. So it, it is a little bit different from the one that we have presented in theory, because the, the t-test will estimate the sigma from the data and not from the uh, an, a, an a priori uh, fixed value. Okay, so now um, uh, we have uh, five op possible options. So what kind of power analysis do you want to do? So you can compute the sample size given alpha, the power and the effect size. So this is what we want. But there are other possibilities. For instance, you can compute what is alpha given the power, the effect size, and the sample size. Or you can uh, compute what is the effect size given alpha, power, and sample size. So you see that the five variables are related. And given four of them, uh, you can uh, compute the fifth. So let's, let's compute the sample size. So how many tails? So, uh, we want to use two tails because we don't know if the machine uh, will uh, put more or less, uh, more or less uh, concentration in each one of the tablets. And we have to compute the effect size. This is a normalized effect size. So the normalization is done between uh, taking into account what are the differences. So if the null hypothesis is true, then the concentration should be 250. But if the alternative is true, I want to detect the changes of, of 0 0.5 milligrams. And the standard deviation is 1. So you see that this normalized effect size is the normalization, uh, the ratio between delta, that is the difference between these two values divided by sigma. But actually, that was what appeared in the formulas. So if you look, go to the formulas, what you have in the, here, it is uh, delta divided by sigma. So you, you can also see it here. So you take the sigma down, and then it is delta divided by sigma. So it would be 1.96 divided by delta divided by sigma. <coughs> So this implicitly, this, this calculation is, is having a power of 50%. So I will use that. So, well, okay, so transfer to the main window. So you can see that if, if it is, we have larger, uh, well, let, let's do it like this. And later we will do all these modifications. So the alpha will be 0 0.05 and the power will be 0 0.5 and then we get seven uh, total sample size 18 that is a little bit larger than what we had before in the in the slides but it is because we are using a t-test rather than a set test meaning that we will need to estimate the sample the, the standard deviation from the sample while in the example in the slides uh, i was uh, i was using a fixed standard deviation and uh, we see that uh, because of this rounding up, we have gained a little bit of power. OK, so what happens if, uh, uh, OK, so probably a 50% of missing uh, a malfunctioning is, is too risky. So instead of 0 .9, uh, 0 0.5, we want to be more sure. 
and then you need many more tablets. So we see that increasing the power meaning means increase the sample size. What if the data is, is less variable? So let's say that my standard deviation is only 0 0.5, so now it should be easier to, to find this difference. And you see it is much easier. We go down from 54, we go down to 16. So it is much easier to detect a change of 0 0.5 when uh, of 0 0.5 when the standard deviation is 0 0.5. So this ratio delta divided by sigma, you can think of it as a, as a, as a signal to noise ratio. Here we have the same kind of plots that we were having before. So you have two critical lines, this is the distribution, and if the null hypothesis is true, this is the distribution if the the alternative is true and because we are using t distributions the t distribution is not symmetric so the the non-centered uh, t distribution is not symmetric so you see that one side is is decays more smoothly than the other side and we have the same kind of annotations that i was doing so this area is alpha half this area is beta and we can also see what is the effect if, for instance, instead of one, uh, two tails, we need only one tail. So we go down from a sample size of 16 to a sample size of 13. So it is not terrible. So it is not such a, a big change in number of animals. But it, it, it makes a change if uh, consistently you design your experiments properly and what happens if we don't we cannot use the the gaussianity of the data so the data is not gaussian or we don't know if it is gaussian so we would use uh, one of these uh, non-parametric tests we can also put the same numbers as we had before so let's say we have these numbers more fresh so we will uh, use these ones and then we have one tail two tails so let's say we have two tails that the sample size was 16 and and then we calculate and still the sample size is still 16 so uh, in this case we are not losing much um, but it, it might there might be a small difference if you are using uh, Gaussianity or if, if you cannot use it. And the, the reason is the same as we had before, that uh, the more information you put into the system, the fewer the sample size. And uh, putting the information that the data is Gaussian, you are adding information. And then the sample size calculated for the Gaussian, for the parametric test, is always uh, a, li a little bit smaller than if you cannot use this information. Okay, so let's do it now with the, sorry, let's do it now uh, for the uh, lesion area. So we want a, a calculation of relating means, but we will compare control and treatment groups. So we have two uh, groups, uh, but they are independent because the animals in the control group they don't have anything to do with the animals in the treatment. So two independent groups, and we will use the parametric version. So here we have it, and um, and then uh, we will compute the sample size. So we put the sample size, and we want to show that the area. Uh, uh, decreases, so we want to show uh, a one. Or we will do a one-tail test, and we have <coughs> possibilities to have a diff. Uh, okay, so what is the mean of of one of the groups? It is fifty. <coughs> the other group is uh, twenty-five. The standard deviation. We were saying standard deviation of 10. Let's say the same standard deviation in both groups. 
so we can calculate the sample size, the effect size. So we see this the difference that is 25 divided by sigma. And it doesn't need to be so straightforward. So for instance, let's say that you also, because the mean area is, is decreasing by half, uh, then let's say that the standard deviation is also decreasing by half. And now it is not so easy to relate, at least uh, there is a formula for it for this, but it is not so straightforward. So, uh, but this effect size is the normalized effect size that we should use. Okay, so we uh, transfer to the main window. So let's say that we want to have very low probabilities of, of false positives and false negatives, and we want the same um, number of animals in both groups. Then we can calculate, and we see that uh, we would need very few animals per group, so only four animals per group. And the reason is that this standard deviation is pretty small. So let's say that we have a larger standard deviation. So we can calculate transfer to here, and uh, now we have a, a larger sample size. And here, uh, let's say that uh, we have two tails. Now it will be an even larger sample size. So so yeah, the difference. Why are we getting so low sample sizes? Because we said that this, the variance was a thousand before. And the, uh, uh, the standard deviation, the square root of a thousand, is about 30. So let's say it is 33. This is 33. And now we transfer, and we calculate, and let's say one tail. And now we have the 39 that are the kind of in the order of magnitude of what we were having before. Okay, so uh, what else? We can. For instance, let's say that uh, 39 is a lot. I cannot work with 39 animals per group because this this is uh, uh, too costly, and I I'm not uh, I don't have enough resources to do this experiment. So uh, I can handle 10. So I can handle 10. So that means. So let's let's look at this. The effect size that we want to detect, so we want to detect a change of 25 when the standard deviation is 33. So that means that the, the effect delta divided by sigma is 0 0.75. It is too difficult. We want to detect something that is below the level of noise. And that is why we need more samples. But let's say that uh, I want to, uh, to lower the the number of animals. I, I cannot use more than 10. So if I cannot use more than 10, then uh, I will calculate the effect size. So this effect size, I will have 10 animals per group. I will be doing a one tail test. And then what I see is that I can detect only changes that are 1.5 times the the sigma so if my sigma is 33 I, I can only detect changes that are of at least 48 so which is a lot so I am either I'm decreasing from 50 and a change of 48 or I will not be Able. So I, that my my drug is really really effective in decreasing the, the lesion area. Or with only ten animals, I will not be able to show that that is true. And uh, as always, there are a lot of, of subtleties because uh, this uh, this is assuming that the sigma is the same in both in both cases. We have seen that if the sigma decreases, then the delta the effect size, the normalized effect size, is treated differently. So, but it gives you an idea of, of what you will be able to detect. So you will be able to detect these changes 
with a probability with power 0 0.95 but I will be also be able to detect these changes that are smaller with probability uh, 0 0.9 with a statistical power 0 0.9 and uh, for instance with a smaller power I will be more and more sensitive but more and more sensitive means you are more and more likely that uh, to miss those effects so there is a curve uh, there is a curve of of, of uh, a relationship between sensitivity and power. So uh, you do the design for one point of that curve, but there is a, a whole range of for any given sensitivity, I will have a given power. So I think this is uh, all I wanted to show about the calculation and just to remark that the calculations, the right calculations are, are done uh, through these distributions so you have to find a point such that from that point to the left you have a, a beta and from that point to the, to the left, uh, right you have alpha and this is for a one tail test if you have two tails test then you will have alpha half and alpha half here so uh, this is the, the main idea and you can uh, use G power for many different purposes so you may check uh, variances, means, proportions we will see all this kind of stuff along the course and this would be it